Good morning, everyone. Uh -huh. Check that chat box is working quickly. Can you just let me know? Can you all hear me all okay? Just it, there should be a chat box there for you to be able to use. And I just need to know that you can hear me loud and clear and you can see me. Good stuff. Fantastic. Emily, good to see you. John, John, there's four Johns. Good to see you all. Andy, Colin, Eileen, Elise, good to see you all. Um, just let me know, just while we while we get warmed up. Um, let me know whereabouts you're tuning in from today. Where are we? we've had registrations coming from all over the globe. We've got people tuning in in Dubai, in the UAE, which is amazing. It was good to see. We've got a couple of people from Cape Town in here. We've also got people from oh, John. You're in Thailand. Yes, good stuff. Felix Stowe, Turkey, Harrogate, all tuning in from all over the place. John from Wales. What part of Wales are you from, John? All my family are from Cardiff. So. Nicholas is on the train. Good stuff. Amazing. Cool. So just to make sure that you're all in the right place. Um, today, we're going to be talking to you all around LinkedIn, social selling, lead generation, but most importantly, how we can generate revenue from these platforms, like from today. This isn't something which is something that's going to take you a long time to do. It's actually relatively simple what I'm going to be taking you through. And I've got some really, really cool updates on what the platform's doing, how you can make the most of it, and then where our focus is going to be. So you can also start to almost, I guess, take inspiration and look to leverage in your own way as well. Uh, Richard, good to see you. Good to have you here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hang around too long. I'm going to share my screen. I just need to make sure that you can see my slides all okay. So whilst I move the chat box back up here, let me move that across. Where have you got? There you go. Can you all see the slide, the pretty pink slide that sits there? Good stuff. A few of you can. Let's see if there's a few more that can. Good stuff. Cool. Jackie, Emily, Colin, Mark all can see it. Amazing stuff. Okay. So if you followed me for a while or you've literally just been randomly invited to this event, one of the things that I want to really get really, really clear is that my job today isn't to complicate this for you. It's actually to simplify it. Nothing I'm going to teach you is rocket science. It's really, really straightforward. But I actually think sometimes it's the simple stuff that we can forget. And when you start to have a light shine on those simple things, it can really, really give you a bit of a light bulb in terms of what you need to change. So all of the stuff that I do on LinkedIn takes me around about 10 to 15 minutes a day. I am not a lover of social media whatsoever. I use it to generate business and then I get off it. So we are all about a pipeline 44 revenue generation, saving time and squeezing absolutely everything that we can out of these social media platforms. Now, if LinkedIn suddenly dies a slow death tomorrow, I couldn't care less. We will move and we will do it on another social media platform. There are that many out there to take advantage of. The reason why I'm talking about LinkedIn today is purely because of the opportunity that I see right at this moment in time. I may deliver this in a year's time and I'll be talking about a different platform altogether. But right now, for the next three, six, nine months, I don't see anything changing in terms of what's available to us. And when it comes to this workshop specifically, I have three main aims. The first one is to give you as much as I possibly can in around about the hour that we've got together. I've got specific examples that I'm going to share, and I'm also going to teach you certain things that you can change in your LinkedIn activity, which is going to help you build momentum up from a lead generation point of view. The second part of it, I'm going to actually take some time to introduce to you how you can work with us. So our social selling and LinkedIn Academy is something that's very well known in the marketplace right now. And at the end, if it's right for you, you can find out a little bit more about it. But just so you know, you can put your wallets and your purses away. There's nothing that you can buy here today. I'm just going to introduce you to it. And then at the end, I have a real big rule with everything that I do. There is no question off limits. So you will see a Q&A functionality available on Zoom for you. What I do say is if you have any questions, put it inside of that Q&A section so I can cover it off at the end. Unless it's really, really relevant, I won't cover it throughout purely because I want to squeeze as much as I can into this for you. So with that being said, what I like to do is tailor these sorts of workshops for you. And so what I'd like to know is, is the answer to those two questions. The first one is, what is it that you do? Whether you're an employee or you're, you're a business owner, I'd like to know what your role is and what you specialize in. So if you can just put that into the chat for me, I can make sure that I customize the way that I deliver this to fit so it's directly aimed at you. And then two is kind of like a bit of a flavor of what you're trying to get out of this. now. In the description of the event, I obviously list out a lot of things that I'm going to cover, 
some of its content, some of its lead, lead generation, some of its webinars, some of its messaging? Like, what's the thing that you really want to get out of today that's going to make it really, really worth the hour to the hour and a half that you've got that you've got with us? I'm just going to take a quick look in the chat just to see what's coming through, because it seems like we've got lots of people in marketing in here, which is great. We've also got a few different coaches and consultants, which is brilliant. We've got a few accountants on board as well. Amazing. And then the main thing that people seem to be wanting to go into is all around direct lead generation off the platform. That word direct that you've used there is something that's quite key. I don't want to kind of focus too much in it because actually when you start talking about LinkedIn as an end-to-end -end sales solution, it can become not as effective as if you look at it in a slightly different way. So just to caveat what I'm going to be talking to you about, um, tax investigation, business coach, new facilities on LinkedIn is what people want to know. Okay, fantastic. So it gives me a bit of an idea, which is great. Um, some people believe LinkedIn has changed recently and keen to get updated. It kind of has. There's a few things that have changed significantly. Actually, the, the majority of the things that I've been doing, I've been doing for the last 18 months to two years. Um, and they're still working right now as well, which is great. Looking for intros to leads without being salesy. It's a real key one. Good stuff. Okay. So to give you some context to the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you today, I've spoken to probably over the last, well, just over 18 months now, it's probably coming up to the two year mark, around about 1,200 to 1,300 businesses. That's in a number of different capacities, whether it's me public speaking, whether it's me delivering webinars, whether it's me doing strategy calls, whatever. We've spoken to so many different people now. And what I noticed, it was about a year ago, was that there were certain things that just kept coming up over and over again, which really shined a light on why people don't succeed online. These mistakes haven't changed. They're the same. And what I want to take you through in today's workshop is the answers and the solutions to those mistakes. Now, the first mistake, and what I would love for you to do is if any of these relate to you, could you just put the number in the chat box for me just so I can see it, it tends to be the same ones that come up over and over again. But the first one is that the message that you're putting out there right now, whether it's in your content, whether it's when you're communicating to prospects, whether it's you messaging people, the stuff that you're saying is no longer relevant slash doesn't quite stand out in today's marketplace. To give you like a little bit of background around it and some proof, I guess, behind it, when you're scrolling on social media right now, you will most likely scroll past 10 to 15 pieces of content before you stop on one. Now, the post that you stop on is the one that's grabs your attention, which normally means the message that they're putting out there is connecting. The reality to all of that is that the other nine to 14 pieces that you've scrolled past are not hitting the mark. And therefore, what we need to do is show you how you can become the person that people stop on, how you can gain the attention. But the biggest thing that I see is that people don't know how to do that. So inside of today, I'm going to talk to you about the process to doing so. The second big reason why people fail is quite a hard one to admit sometimes I definitely found it hard to admit right at the beginning when I first died, but it's the fact that us as profiles and personal brands, there's no real key reason to follow us anyway. And it doesn't matter if you're working as the human or you're working as the business, unless you can find a way to stand out, you are going to blend in and you're going to lose opportunity by doing so. Number three is that what you probably do right now, you believe is very, very good. And you are very, very skilled, most likely, what it is that you do. However, you don't have enough people in your network or in your audience to sell to. And therefore, a lack of traffic is the reason why you fail. Number four is that actually the strategy that you've got in place is either non-existent or is based on zero process being in place. So you are posting, engaging, probably leaving comments, sending messages, but it's not leading anywhere. So number four is one of the biggest thing that I see most businesses miss. They don't have a process that turns a stranger into a client. And this is something that we're going to dive quite deeply into today, because it's the thing that we need to implement for you to make a difference. And then number five, I touched on it in number four, but just to really round it off is that the strategy that you've got in place is really focused in on the round of hoping that somebody eventually will reach out to you. So if you just keep going, you cut, just keep posting, you cut, just keep messaging, you keep doing the things that you're doing right now, that eventually you'll get an inbound lead. And then that inbound lead will turn into a customer. 
out of interest, one, two, three, four, or five, which one really, really jumps out at you in terms of where you might be struggling right now? So one, three, five, two, four, five, four. Okay, so we're getting a lot of like a lack of process. Um, a lot of people basing strategy on hope. That's a good one to admit. I appreciate the honesty. Not many people actually admit that, but that was where I was at the beginning. I didn't know this stuff. Like I've learned it over time. So a few threes coming through, two and a three. So we've got a big mixture. The good thing is, is that those five things we've covered in this workshop. So by the end of today, you'll have a much clearer picture of what you need to be doing to start taking advantage of all of this stuff. And what I've done is split today's presentation into three sections. Um, part one is all around getting your message right, so it's around clarity. Part two is around about the activity that you need to be doing on LinkedIn to build your audience in 2023. And then the final section is all around conversion, so building a pipeline that's going to sustain throughout the year. It's really, really key to really get all of this stuff right. It's not just picking one part and doing it. You need it all to be able to make the difference. And I don't tend to spend too much time talking about who I am on these workshops whatsoever. So I'm not going to read that for you. It's there for you to understand who I am and what I've done. And if you ever get bored enough, you want to go scroll through my profile, you'll see the journey that I've been on over the last four years. And what I really love focusing on, along with my co-founders at Pipeline 44 and the rest of the team, is simplifying business growth. Because in my opinion, especially when I was starting, when it comes to generating revenue, when it comes to lead generation, when it comes to marketing, everyone overcomplicates this stuff. And it actually is really, really simple when you take a step back and look at what you're doing. And again, I said it once and I'll say it again, nothing I'm going to teach you on here is rocket science. You can all do it. You just need to understand how it relates directly to your business. Now, the first question that I want to answer, because I do use every social media platform out there, is why now are we focusing on LinkedIn? So to give you the context, I have 38,000 followers on Instagram. I have around about 1,000 on YouTube. I get around about 1,500 listens per podcast that I create. Um, I'm not a TikToker whatsoever. I'm not even going to say that I've got an account because it's embarrassing if you try and find it. Um, I am on Facebook. I'm using them all. But I have got a specific focus on LinkedIn right now, and there are some key reasons why I do so. The first one is having the ability to build an audience at speed. Now, when I say build an audience, what I'm saying is building a targeted audience of people that will want to buy from you if you get this right. Now, on Instagram, as an example, when I went about building my following on that platform, I had to do a number of different strategies to be able to do so. I had to make sure I was posting the right content. I used to follow thousands and thousands of people. And then if they didn't connect back with me, I would then unfollow back. So it was a bit of a dark strategy back then. But it was how we used to grow. What I didn't like about it was the fact that it was slow. And it took a lot of graft and a lot of effort. What I've noticed with LinkedIn is when you get this right, it happens at speed. And whether it's via a certain name that you're looking for, if you're like directly looking for Chris Taylor as an example, or you're looking for certain industries, you're looking to connect with certain people in certain sectors, or whether it's by business size, so how many employees people have got, this platform gives you the ability to do it. And it actually really does give you the ability to connect with anyone that you want. I've said this on a few of my workshops recently, like randomly, I've been trying to get like celebrities and people that have got real influence onto my podcast. And so I went connecting with a few like pundits and sports professionals and Rio Ferdinand actually accepted my connection request. Now that doesn't happen on any other platform. So that means I've got Gary Neville and Rio Ferdinand, both in my network, both in conversation, looking to try and get them onto the podcast. If I did that on Instagram, I'd be lucky to even get a message looked at or even a comment looked at. On LinkedIn, you have the ability to get into people's inboxes and we are proactively encouraged to connect with people. LinkedIn wants you to build a community. It wants you to get more people into your network so you can start to really utilize this platform for what it's for. And what my biggest tip for you on this straight away is, is that don't just try and connect with anybody that just fits the job title or the location that you're searching for. Most people go down this left hand side here with this image and they'll just click connect. What I noticed when I started doing this early on when I was really trying to build my network 
And I'll give you the numbers to this in a second, but I was connecting with people that weren't active on the platform and therefore I wasn't growing quick enough and therefore my content wasn't getting the engagement that I was looking for. So what I do is rather than just mass connecting on the left hand side, I just take like an extra like five to 10 seconds to click into the profile to then go to their activity section to see if they've engaged with anything. And if they've engaged with something within like two to three to four weeks, I know that they're probably not as active as I want them to be, but two weeks and sooner they are. If they're engaging every single day in content, they're exactly who I want. So I'll be able to get their attention knowing the content that I'm creating right now. So just something there that you can start to do straight away rather than just mass connecting. And if you're not connecting at all right now, you need to do it. But like rather than mass connecting, just take that extra time. You can do this on the free version of LinkedIn and actually on the paid version of LinkedIn, SalesNav gives you the ability to actually filter by people that have been active in the last 30 days. So it gives you that little bit of a shortcut as well. Just some little things there for you to consider. The second key reason is the thing that I want to focus on the most here really is it's the ability to be seen for free. So organic reach is very, very well known to be reducing across most platforms right now. So we've got to know how to take advantage of them. On LinkedIn, I'm reaching around about 50 to 60,000 people a week on average throughout a year. And I don't even try that hard. It is really not that difficult. And we've got some shortcuts and tactics that I'm going to give you throughout today. But the big thing to really focus in on is like over the last 12 to 18 months, People are using these platforms more than they ever have done. Like there's more time being spent on LinkedIn than I've ever seen. And when I first started using this platform, you may be able to relate to this a bit, but I was someone that maybe checked it first thing in the morning. This was about a year and a half ago, maybe like first thing in the morning. And then I'd spend more time on other platforms. Now I'm finding myself on LinkedIn multiple times of the day. And even in the evenings, I'm on it. Um, just out of interest or curiosity, who's currently using LinkedIn in the evenings as well as in the daytime? I'd just love to see the contrast between all of you that are here today. I'm definitely using it a lot more in the evenings than I am in the mornings right now. And that was never a thing. It just shows the majority of people coming in saying yes, right? It just shows how this platform's developing. And the thing that you need to realize today is that what you were posting a year ago, if you're still posting the same stuff, you're missing out on opportunity. What I want to teach you today is the stuff that you need to be putting out there and the way that you need to be distributing it to be able to get the attention that you deserve. Because the reality and the hard truth of all of this is that the opportunity on LinkedIn, like I said at the beginning, won't be here forever. Like Instagram, I've got 38,000 followers. I'm lucky to reach 15,000 people a week with a 40,000 on like rounding up Instagram following. It's ridiculous how that platform has fallen off a cliff from an organic point of view. But even with LinkedIn now, it changing the way the newsfeed looks, so there's more advertisements on it, that is automatically going to mean we've got reduced opportunity to be seen. So what you need to know is how do you stay at the top of people's newsfeeds? The third and the final key reason is this thing around lead generation. So one of the things that I'm going to focus in on today for you is talking all about campaigning. Most people, when they use LinkedIn, don't have an end-to-end -end strategy that they're following. I want to show you ours and how it works in detail. But the thing that we're going to deep dive into actually is event-based campaigns, which is actually what you're a part of right now. This is a live webinar, workshop, masterclass, what you want to call it. But... Some of you will have come directly from LinkedIn. Some of you have come from my email list, some from Facebook, some from Instagram. However, the thing that LinkedIn gives you is the, the ability to be able to invite people to your, to your live workshops. And when you start to utilize these the way that we do, lead gen becomes really, really simple. There's a way to deliver these things to get them to work. Like this has taken practice to be able to deliver, and I'm by no means perfect at them but I do enjoy them. And there's something that I love being able to update time and time again. But the most amazing thing with all of this is that over the last year of doing these, we've generated over six and a half thousand leads for free. So just to give that some context, I used to run Facebook and Instagram advertising across um, uh, focusing in on webinars and workshops and to be able to get six and a half thousand of targeted leads into a webinar I would be looking at probably spending around about 12 to 15,000 pounds, three to four to five pound a lead. And that's cheap. 
like I'm actually underestimating probably how much that's going to cost in today's market with the latest iOS updates that have gone on. LinkedIn gives you this ability right now to do it for free, and it's not available on any other social platform right now. Those event, that image there that you can see, you can see that we had, when we did this back in December of in 2021, we got over a thousand people saying yes to Sam's event. That is ludicrous. Like to get that attention on an event doesn't happen anywhere else. This is where the opportunity lies. And what I'd be really, really interested to know is how you got here today. Were you a person that received a LinkedIn event invite and then registered for today? Or did you receive an email? Could you just put in the chat for me where you came from? Was it event? Was it email? Was it Instagram, Facebook? Where did it come from? I'm just curious because sometimes this changes. So we've probably got, which is actually about right, about a 70-30 split. So 70% have come from email, 30% have come from the event. Now, to give you the numbers, we had about 160 people register for this. And that split there shows you what you can expect from very, very easy work when you put this into play. And so when I look at LinkedIn as a platform right now, I'm hoping you can start to see why I'm spending the time on it and maybe why you should as well. Before I move into part one, does that all make sense? Does that give you a little bit of an insight into kind of like what, why we should be using LinkedIn right now? And then kind of as we move into this, the power behind it. It does. Good stuff. Fantastic. Rosie, Emily, thank you. Jason, good. Brilliant. Okay. With that being said, then let's move. Part one, clarity. This is the bit that most people butcher. Right. When you look at content online, which I do, I spend lots of time like analyzing content in our academy. The thing that most people get wrong is how they position themselves or should I say how they deposition themselves, because this is such simple stuff. And I don't mean to come across as like too blunt on this. And but this is the stuff that we need to change. This is where the big difference maker is. Because the truth with all of it, and I've had, like I say, hundreds and hundreds of conversations around this stuff now. This is a fact. LinkedIn will not work for you unless you have a message which is relevant and captures attention. So you warrant and earn that attention. Most prospects, when we have a, like an analysis on people's pipelines, when you then go and ask them, do they know what it is that you do? They can't answer it. And therefore, what that means is, is that you're not nurturing in a way that actually clearly communicates how you help people. What I find is typically you're most likely spewing information that people don't really care about. And actually, the stuff that you're creating, you're probably bored creating it. So in real reality, how can we expect any other people to be bored the, to actually enjoy it either? We've got to have enthusiasm and, and passion when we're creating and talking. And that's what people connect with. So we need to take a look at what you've been posting over the last 7, 14, 21 days to see whether it actually showcases the best version of you or not. But the big thing really is that most people don't truly understand, and I didn't at the beginning either, the messaging that our ideal clients and prospects are actually going to connect with and to relate to. And there's this thing that I want to take you through in a second, which is all around awareness, around problems, solutions, and the way that you can work with people. And this was the thing that made the biggest difference to us. And you can see the diagram on the right hand side there. What we find is that most people talk to their connections like they already know what their services are. And on the right hand side, you can see the diagram from not aware to problem aware to solution aware to service aware. This is a journey that we want to take every single prospect through. And what lots of people do whenever I watch sales calls for people in the academy or I watch people's webinars, we tend to default and go through to solutions. So we go features and benefits and why we're so great. They tend to be the typical things that I see people saying, even in social proof type content. Like they're explaining why they're so brilliant without actually adding any of the context. And that's actually where the majority stay. They stay in that position of just talking about their business without understanding the language that they need to be communicating in to get people to listen. Now, if they're not doing that, what they tend to find is that they move into this problem aware status. So what you'll find in your content is you'll, you'll hear marketers definitely talk about this, focusing on pain and issues and problems. And you start to tell people what their issues and problems are. 
What we've found in today's marketplace, especially right now and over the last three to four months, is if you start telling people what they're doing wrong, they automatically put a wall up and push you away. And what we also find is that because you're telling them, you're battling with the fact that they don't even know that they've got the problem. So they just scroll past you because they don't connect and they don't relate with it. So what we've got to do is start communicating in language, which helps them realize what it is that they're doing wrong. We've got to showcase and tell stories, which helps shine a light on the mistakes that they're making, the behaviors that they're doing, that's not actually allowing them to get the results that your product and service allows them to get. And the way that we do that is with a shock and awe type message. And that's something that I talk a lot about inside of the next step of this, all of this inside of the content section. But the big thing that you need to realize is if you're currently out there talking about problems, talking about pain, talking about your solutions online right now, you are missing out on opportunity because the reality of the situation is people don't even know that they've got the problems in the first place. So therefore, they're never going to listen to you. This is the power of what we do. People don't come to us saying, Chris, I want to buy your social selling academy. They don't also come to us and say, Chris, I just want to learn how LinkedIn works. That isn't typically the sentences that get said to us for us to be able to be able to work out if the product's right for them. The messages that hit my inbox typically are, I'm posting content and no one's engaging with it, and I don't know why. I'm using social, but I'm not getting any results with it, but I'm seeing lots of other people getting it. And then number three is that I know LinkedIn is a place for me to get business, but I'm not getting any. They tend to be the reasons people booking calls with us. And by us communicating the answers to those questions on a consistent enough basis, what it means is, is that our audience are engaging, they're connecting, my audience continues to grow, and we get more and more people coming into our pipeline. The language that we use is the stuff that most people fall short of. And this is where we can make the big difference. What we need to take the time to do is identify how we make what we do from a service point of view relevant to the person we are speaking to. So there's some questions that you can take a photo of and just answer in your own time. The first one is deeply understanding why your customer should buy from your business in the first place. This is absolutely critical to everything. If you don't know the answer to this from their point of view, not your point of view, their point of view, then unfortunately you're going to un not be able to communicate what you do in a clear enough manner to enable them to be able to make a decision. The second key question is when is the right time for them to buy and what are the consequences if they wait? This is something that I don't see in anyone's marketing and it should be on your websites, it should be on your landing pages, it should be in your workshops, it should be in your messaging. You should be actively communicating to people the consequences if they delay making a decision. And then once you then get that all together and you start consistently talking this language, you can then put stuff out there which helps them understand what the right move is. So one of the things that I do in all of my stuff is I make it clear that our services aren't for everyone. Our products aren't for everyone. However, what we can do is be able to ask you certain questions and give you certain pieces of information to help you realize if we're right for you or not. And if we're not, we'll tell you and we'll direct you to someone where it potentially can solve your problem in a better way that we can. But that approach works really, really well. And it's something that we worked very, very deeply with, with a lady called Sasha Saville. Now, Sasha, is a, when she first started working with us, had a virtual assistant business. Now, I don't know if we have any virtual assistants on right now. However, in that marketplace, people are fighting for business on an hourly rate basis. So what happens is Sasha would say, All right, I'm going to charge £15 per hour and I'll do anything that you want. I'll do your emails. I'll do your diary management. I'll organize your events. I'll do your social media and I'll just charge you a basic hourly rate for it. She would have set her hourly rate of £15 an hour. Now, what happens is when she then goes to market, she came up with conversation after conversation with, well, Sasha, I've got a quote from someone else and they're going to charge me £14 an hour and do the same job. So she then go back and go, well, I'll do 13 50 Then they'll go and they'll do, well, they're going to do 13 Then it's 12 11 10 and she ends up earning minimum wage. This is the problem. We end up going into this price war because we're not differentiating ourselves from the marketplace. And this is what we had to do with Sash. So we took the time to look at her business model and create packages. It's something that we do deeply inside of the academy in like session one. 
We take the time to look at the way that you package and position your services and your products, and we wrap them in the way that takes you away from being compared to everybody else in the marketplace. You need to differentiate yourself. And by doing it, we turned her virtual assistant solopreneur business into an outsourcing solutions agency where she had certain packages which she would offer out. Her rates went from on average being £15 an hour to around about £25 an hour delivering real quality of what she was doing. The amazing thing was when she, once she made this shift, it was that result that she got. She had people that were ready to buy from her, but just couldn't make the decision. By her switching the way that she presented her products, she changed her messaging in the way that she was putting it out there. She got 45 grand worth of business in two weeks and enabled her to grow a six-figure company from that. This stuff was not difficult. It was really, really simple. We just had to work out the language that we needed to communicate and the package we needed to put together. We need to link them in the right way in the right places in front of the right people to be able to get the opportunity. That was it. That was all we needed to do. And it was the same thing with Jamie in the same way, because Jamie, when I first met him, was a, a speaker for another training company. And I remember having the conversation with him about doing his own thing. Now, when we kind of took the time to map out what we wanted to do, we realized that everyone in the property training industry was saying the same things. Right. They were running the same two day courses and delivering the same poor results. I knew that because I'd been there and I would bought the training in this. I would bought property training before. So I knew what made me buy. And I also knew what made these courses so bad. So we took the time to work out how to differentiate what he did. And we took the time to answer how could we actually truly solve the problem that most beginning property investors were having. And we created the experience to allow him to do it. And Aspire 84, his training program was built. And once we did that and we took the message to market, Jamie was able to do about 1.4 million pounds in about nine months. And that was something in that marketplace that took off. We were the right place, the right time. But this has happened with so many different businesses that we've worked with. I've got more and more that we'll share. But it just comes back to this basic stuff. And I hope this is actually sounding really simple for you. None of this stuff is rocket science, right? It's really straightforward. But it's sometimes it's really difficult for you to see when you're trapped day to day in your business of what you need to be saying. Sometimes you need the advice from someone that's not in it to be able to highlight where you need to change. And at the end of today, I'm going to give you the opportunity for free to speak with me. I'm going to give you the details at the end. But inside of that call, we're going to spend half an hour talking to you about that message that's going to grab the attention. We're going to work out what yours is. We're then going to review like your product and offer relevancy like we did for Sasha. I'm going to talk to you about your current brand positioning. So where you are today and where you want to get to and what the gap is. And what I'd like to know is we've got probably room for about 15 to 20 of these, like looking at my diary space over the next week or so. Um, if you'd like one of those calls, just put yes in the chat for me. And what I can then do is if you stay till the end, you'll get the link to be able to book one. Um, but what we'll do is we'll spend that time just working through what it is that's probably not going right for you not right now and the simple things that we can really move forward with. Great stuff. There's loads of you that are saying it. If you wait till the end, we'll give you the link to be able to do it. So before we finish off on this section, I want to give you some real key top tips to take away from it. The first one is really making sure that you find a message that disrupts. Now, that's something that we will discuss on that call in detail, but we need to find a way for you to stand out. And the way that you can do this, like a little shortcut for you, is just to take the time to talk to your clients. Like go and ask them, have a conversation with them, drop them a direct message and just see whether they give you five to 10 minutes for you to get this feedback. Like ask them what made you different and what made them buy from you, because I guarantee it wasn't the price. You need to work out why people should buy from you and actually ask your audience what it is, the problem that you solve for them. What is it that you're actually doing? How are you saving them? How are you helping them? The more clarity that you get on this, the easier it is to, to do to market yourself out there. And then that final point there is the gold to everything that we do. Everything that I post, everything that I say in this presentation, every message that I send, I need to work out like, is this thing relevant? Is what I'm posting relevant? And will people care about it? And if so, why will they? If I can get clarity on that and I know the answer to it, I will put it out there. If I'm not 100% sure that people will care about it, I hold it back. We need to be intentional with everything that we do. 
Now, I know I'm talking quite quickly. I've got lots of stuff to get through, but does that all make sense? Is that clear? Part one, has that been helpful and is it clear? Good stuff. Raising hands. Good stuff. Great. Thank you. Good. Lara, Rakita, Andy, Jake. Good. To, amazing stuff. Cool. Right. Part two. So this is the LinkedIn activity. Please, please, please do not move and start doing this stuff. This this part two until you've got part one done. It is critical to everything. Now, when it comes to your LinkedIn activity, this stuff actually hasn't changed. Like the finer details beneath it have done. There's some like real things that you can do to be able to win with this platform. But the fundamentals haven't changed. In terms of what you need to be doing on LinkedIn, there's three key things. Network building, content and prospecting. That is the same pretty much on every social media platform. I'm just going to take you through each of them. Now, network building is the thing that most people overlook and find really boring. It's the thing that our team love to do. Um, I'm sure they'll back me up with that sarcastically saying it obviously but when it comes to this network building needs to be done every single day the ability to connect with people like i said at the beginning you do not have the ability to do it on any other platform and this is why i loved it i set myself the target and nick's also done the same my business fan and we set ourselves the target of just growing our audience every single day in 10 months i went from 5000 connections to that's actually a typo it's 12000 connections in 10 months Nick went from, I think it was like 4,000 and he's just crossed 10,000 as well. We don't have huge audiences on this platform. You don't need to. However, it is so easy to build if you can just get into the habit of doing it. Max out your 30 to 50 connection requests every single day and connect with people that are going to find your content interesting. Now, to be able to work that out, it's really, really key to know where your audience is spending their time. The example that I picked on the right there, I did a talk for a property group yesterday and there's a group online with 50,000 people in, all interested in property investment. I literally said to them, go out there and message the people in this group and get them to connect with you because they've got a similar interest. They'll engage in your content if you're posting about property. You just need to understand what you need to be creating to get their attention. There will be groups out there for whatever industry and whatever niche you're currently in. You can go and find them and you can start to participate in these communities to build your network even quicker. But the big thing that LinkedIn gives you the ability to do is search, right? Filtering. You'll all know this if you've used LinkedIn before, but there's certain things that you need to deep dive into to be able to make the most out of this. Now, with the property example, you've got kind of like people tend to be looking for investors. So again, with this thing here, what I looked on the right hand side here is just one real key example for you is what did an ideal investor or client back then for me in my first business look like? Well, I gave the example of I was looking for people that had like very little time, but lots of money. And that was sales directors, right? That was the big thing. And so sales directors in London, I used to build my network with over and over again. Now, what I need you to think about is with your ideal client, what jobs do they have? Like, what do they currently do? Are they a CEO? Are they a chief marketing officer? Are they a sales exec? Are they a coach or a consultant? Are they a startup? What is it they currently do? Like with me, I was looking at, did they have an interest in property? Where were these people in property spending their time? Who did they follow and engage with? And what I used to do is, is just proactively build my network with people that are going to be interested in what I had to say. Like, that property example was just what I did right at the beginning. What is yours? Like, what is it that you do? I know we had lots of coaches and consultants on here, lots of marketing people on here. Who do you want in your network? And where do they then spend their time? You need to take the time to be able to work out what that is. And then you can start proactively going out and building. That stuff is literally clicking buttons. There is no excuses as to why anybody cannot do it. Section two around content requires a little bit of thought, a bit more probable thought than what you're doing right now. However, it's still simple. Most people, if you're looking at the newsfeed, like I mentioned at the beginning, are posting information that we just don't care about. And we tend to forget the most important rule when it comes to content. And actually, it's taking a step back and going, right, with everything that I react to, everything that I comment on, everything that I share, like, what is it within those posts that make me do that? And what happens is, is if we don't get this right, we end up taking like and being quite defensive. 
if our posts don't perform very well, we look at it and we go, well, it must be the algorithm's fault. It must be LinkedIn's fault. They must just not like me. And what I want to really make clear to you is that it's never the algorithm's fault. It's us as a creator's fault because we're not doing what the platform wants us to do. And on the right hand side here, you can just see like one example through Donna, who I'm going to talk about at the end as well. But this one example here, she created a post um, which she helps lawyers um, move up in their corporate careers. That's what she does. She's a consultant. And we use this tool called the emotions wheel. Now, I don't know if you've heard of the emotions wheel before, but if you go and Google it, um, you'll see it's just like this graphic that's out there and it gives you all the human emotions that are out there that we relate to. And one of the top tips that I gave to Donna, something that we train in depth inside of the academy is to take your content piece and just with the headline, pick one of the, the emotions on the outside of the wheel and put that emotion into the headline. So I, I can't remember what hers was, but it could have been something like I'm disgusted with what's happened here or I cannot believe how excited and passionate I am about this thing. Like the emotion she pick would then determine the, the tone of the post. But just by putting that emotion in the headline, she ended up getting where on average she was getting, I think she says here, like just a tad over the 500 mark. That was my average on Monday. They were her impression. She ended up getting 7,000. Now with that stuff, that came from the fact that we were using emotion and we knew what people would react to. This is the stuff that we need to learn and embed. And that emotions wheel is just something that you can take away with today and start to utilize. This is the same thing that happens time and time again. When you put stuff out there that emotionally connects with people, you can see the results that it gets. Opportunities come into your inbox when people can connect, when people can resonate with you. And people always ask me like time and time again, does personal content work? And I always used to be a little bit like on the fence with it because I always used to post it, but did it work? I wasn't really sure. So I went about testing it for a few months. And the reason why it does is purely because we find things in common with people that we're connected with. And when we find things in common, we're more likely to remember them. And when we remember them, that's the rule one I want with social media marketing. And actually marketing in general, when you connect with someone, you remember them. Suddenly when they've got the problem and they remember that you solved that problem, they're more likely to come to you. And this is where all of this stuff starts to click into gear, because when you start posting the right stuff and framing it in the right way and talking the right language, you'll see the sorts of messages that you get back. This is one that Sam did. I think it was a few months ago now. But you can see that that specific post there, two hours after putting it out, we got a message from Tom Sproston saying, just seeing your post about social selling pipelines. Could you please send me some details of one of your events again? pushing them through the process because the content worked. And again, you can see this happens time and time again, like increased visibility, landed a contract to run two masterclasses with an organization I did not know even existed. They came to me. This is about the way that you frame your message. And again, you can see it isn't that difficult. We just need to get the best version of you out there. And what I mean by that is like start to put yourself in a position where you are capturing you in your best moments. What I found was, and again, this is by working with lots and lots of different people over the last few years, is that the people that I meet one-to-one, -one, like I talk to on Zoom, I'm going to have a conversation with so many of you over the next few days. I'm going to see like the most passionate, enthusiastic, the people that really care about what they do. I'm going to see the best versions of you, right? What happens is, is that when I then take a look at your social media profiles, I'll see about 10 to 20% of you. And this is the thing that we need to create. We, we need to put you in positions where you are creating content that really shows off how great you are. And this was something that I do a lot on my YouTube channel. Like I use it as a credibility builder. And what I do is I create like nine to 10 minute videos. You can go and check out my YouTube channel, by the way, and go and drop me a subscribe if this has been helpful for you. I'd be very, very grateful. But Chris Taylor online, if you go and search for it, you'll see those videos. Now in my messaging and in my content, I'm looking at driving people to those videos so I get longer and longer watch time of people spending with me. Out of interest, on here today, is there anyone that has seen my YouTube videos before? I just want, again, just out of context, it'd be good to see how well this plays. So we've got a few no's coming in, which is great. So you can go and have a look, which is amazing. A couple of yeses, which is great as well. Like for me, this is the stuff that really, really works. 
And what I'm looking to do in my prospecting and my content is drive more and more people to do it. Looking at the answers in today's one, I've got a lot of work to do. There's more no's than there is yeses. I've got more work to do to drive people to this because you've got an hour of me today, like on this, there's loads of time on there with it. And when you start to talk to me, you'll start to see how we can really make a difference with what you're doing. But the biggest thing really is to start building and connecting with people on different platforms. You don't need to do them all. I recommend doing two, like LinkedIn and YouTube with a bit of Instagram is where I spend my time. And I look to move people to a place where my best content is. And the things that you can do to get going are like take a take the time to think about what your audience want. Now, there are some good sites out there that you can do it. If you go and type your subject into YouTube, you will see all the top performing videos that are on YouTube. Go and have a look at them and actually look to create your own versions. It's easy content for you. You can go to a site like answerthepublic.com and you can put in your keywords and it will show you all the most commonly asked questions in your overall industry around those keywords so you can create videos of it. If I can give you any big tip ever, it's like become the encyclopedia of what it is that you do and you'll see how your credibility starts to build. Whether you're using Answer the Public, YouTube, Quora, Reddit, there's so many of them out there with loads and loads of information for you to be able to go and get. But the biggest thing that you need to realize is what these platforms want you to do. If you go out there and you start posting like graphic type content, which I've been testing a lot recently, you'll notice you'll get the similar results to me. It's a bit flat. They don't work on LinkedIn. If you start posting like very, very like relatable, emotionally engaging industry related content, as long as your connections relate to that stuff, you'll see how your overall content performance increases. This was the sort of stuff that I was posting. Like it was nothing difficult in my property business. It was key photos showcasing to people what we were doing. When I started to build the marketing agency out, it was around about showcasing me speaking in lots and lots of people and lots and lots of different rooms. This all added credibility. And in terms of the captions, this was the sort of stuff that we were adding. Like I was summarizing the activity that we were doing in the property business, like five houses, 71 reservations, thousands and thousands of pounds of profit, um, three JV partners. Like the second one was around about educating people. So I was showcasing to people how much we knew about what we did. We were helping people and serving. The third one was talking about the profits we were making. And again, this type of content is what we encourage people to do time and time again. So you can start to position yourself in the right way. This stuff isn't actually that difficult. All this content is out there for you to be able to look at. What you need to understand is how can you do it in the same way that I did, but for what your business does. When it comes to content, like the first thing that you need to really think about is like going into that work that I said before. Look at YouTube, answer the public, Reddit, Quora, go and take the time to work out what questions your target market are answering. Use the emotions wheel to relate with people. And the moment you realize what people react to, you can start to repeat this over and over again. And when you get it right, that's when inbound leads come in. I remember Sam doing that post that I mentioned before. That was the diagram that she shared. It was our own process flow. And again, that message from Tom came in off the back end of it. He saw the pipeline and went, you know what? I need that in my business. The same thing happens time and time again. And when you then get your content right, you can then move into prospecting. So prospecting, again, is about having a message that you send to people that actually are going to get responses. Out of interest, in the last, what, seven days, have you ever received a spammy sales message that you've just ignored? Just out of interest. It happens on LinkedIn all the time. I get absolutely fed up and it drives me crazy. However, in that, everyone has, right? The yeses are flipping flying in. But in that moment, what I realized was if there's being an abundance of automation and crap messages going out there, there's opportunity. And what I mean by opportunity is, is that there is potential for us to draft a great message, which is going to get responses. And what I took the time to do is have conversations with people to work out what they would respond to. And what I realized was, was that people weren't going to respond. That was, the, that was the actual evidence that I got. Unless you were a key person of influence, people were not going to respond to you. And so what I wanted to look at was, right, if I can get one message opened, how can I actually look to capitalize on that the most? And this was the sort of message that I crafted. It was very much, look, I don't have time to speak to you. You don't have time to speak to me. 
push away. If you're interested in learning how to use social, here's a YouTube video that will help you. And then here's a document that you need to give me your email address to be able to, to get access to. And you get 100 content ideas with it. We just used to maximize and send this out to so many different people. And from that, our list was built. And I used to get lots and lots of watch time over on my YouTube channel. We still do this today. Now, you can create your own version of that message. And by the way, I've done this presentation a lot. This message is out there to thousands and thousands of people. So if you just copy it, you're just going to be looking at the same as everyone else. So look to differentiate, look to create your own version. And that, when you get it right, will allow you to start utilizing outreach in the way that it's designed. Not actually right now for conversations, because really we don't have time to be having hundreds of conversations with people but a way to be able to get the attention in an inbox and be able to drive people where they get to see the best version of you without you having to be directly involved. Now, what I promise, this is new for this year, uh, that I would give some like form of predictions for this, for like what I believe LinkedIn will do and what I believe social media will do. Now, these are predictions. It doesn't say that they're gonna happen and it's only my opinion of what I believe is gonna happen. I. I feel very strongly about some of this stuff purely because of the way that I see people talking about certain subjects. Now, my predictions, the first one is what I mentioned at the beginning. More and more people are going to be blaming this algorithm saying that LinkedIn are no longer showing my content. And that's going to be a fact. Organic reach will reduce. So what I'm saying to people is take advantage of it while it's here right now. And the reason why I believe it will reduce is for two reasons. One is advertising. I reckon more paid advertising on this platform will come. There'll be more room on the newsfeed for ads. That'll be a big thing. Um, but two, you may have heard of this automation tool called openai.com, chat GBT, whatever you want to call it. Now, AI is a thing that I'm looking into quite a lot at the moment. And I've got a strong opinion for it through a few little tests that we've done. But what I'm predicting is that people will use it people will find like there's real benefits from it in terms of quick content creation. But in terms of lead generation, what I found is, is that typically laziness in your own work and your own efforts only leads to reduced results, even though you're saving time. So what you're going to have to end up doing is balancing up. Is the time that you're saving using automation tools actually worth it in terms of the reduced results that you're going to get? So I ran a test on like blog writing as an example, and I put the same sentence in, like write me five blogs on marketing in a friendly tone on AI. And I did it in dark mode. And I also did it on a few different browsers. It pulled through the exact same content. So what my worry is, is that everyone's going to start looking the exact same as everyone else, because we're all using the same keywords, using these automation tools to create content. The thing that I want to urge you to do if you're looking at anything AI related is don't remove the personalization from it. Don't let your brand be taken over by computers. The thing that we need to do is here is get yourself out there because you're the people that people are going to relate to right at the beginning. Utilize the tools for what they're for, but don't keep the finished article. Amend and look to utilize and move forward. Number three is that I believe, and this is something that I've heard just as a rumor, that short form video will enter the LinkedIn platform. It's happened everywhere else. LinkedIn just tends to be a little bit slow with its development. Now, I don't know whether it will create its own separate section or it will just push any short form video further. But I think over whether it's Q2, Q3, Q4, I reckon there will be a TikTok, Instagram reel section um, on LinkedIn where short form video will be encouraged. There's no hiding from it our attention spans are reducing. And so what we need to realize is, is that if you're creating long form videos, you've got to be a very, very good creator to be able to keep the attention. I've lost people today on this workshop because maybe I've not been as engaging as I could have done. Maybe it's due to the length. If this was 10 minutes, everyone would be still be on. But the reality is, is that in this content type, this length works. On LinkedIn, a different content length will work. And short form video is something that we're all going to have to embrace, whether we like it or not. The fourth one is that LinkedIn events will continue to be extremely useful. LinkedIn loves these and people still aren't utilizing enough. Uh, this is the way that I think it's going to work. And as, as much as I hate to say it, 
I think there'll be more automation than we've ever seen, whether it's content creation or sending messages, or there's even a tool out there now that's commenting on behalf of people, like there's going to be more automation. We will not be using it. Like I don't see any benefit from it. It's only ever when I've tested this rigorously, only ever reduced overall performance because these platforms are smart enough to detect these automation tools. And two is going to be even less results than ever before. And um, Con, I'll actually answer that for you at the end. Not a problem at all. But they're my predictions. Like I'm not saying they're going to happen. It's just I took some time to think about it. They're the things that I think will happen on this platform. But to round off connection, what I need you to do is think about what your audience is searching for. Really think about LinkedIn as the beginning of your customer journey. And that top tip that I gave at the beginning, I want to reiterate it just in case some of you missed it. Start taking notice of what stops you in your scroll on the newsfeed and save those posts. Click the three dots on anything that you stop scrolling on and save them. And then you can go back to them and you can start to look at what made you stop and then incorporate that into your content as you go. If you've got any questions, Emma, I know you've just asked, could you ask that in the Q&A box for me? I'll answer that at the end because it's a really, really important question. I'll answer it. That would be great. Um, utilize the emotions wheel and then make sure that you realize that link people are not on LinkedIn to buy products. If you're selling in any way on this platform, you're losing, you're missing out on opportunity. There are two reasons why people use LinkedIn. Number one is for their own selfish interests. So to generate business like we do, it's a key reason I use it. And, and number two is because they're bored, looking to fill time. In every, whatever way you want to look at it, you may have picked up your phone and started scrolling throughout today at some point. That's the reality of every situation. Now, if you understand that and you can start to utilize some of the things that I've spoken to you about there, you can start to capitalize and start to put out the stuff that you know are going to grab people's attention when they're bored. Part two complete. Does it make sense? Is it useful? Is there something you can take away and go and apply? Let me know in the chat box for me. Fantastic. Good stuff. Let's move on to the final section, the bit which I find relatively sexy, whether you do or not, we'll soon find out. LinkedIn right now, when you look at people's behaviors on this platform, <clears throat> there's typical activity that people do. The stuff that I mentioned in part two, and actually, if you're doing everything that I said in part two, this is the reason why you're not getting the results that you feel like you deserve. A typical user does build their network. Their content activity tends to be start the week strong, wake up like seven o'clock onto LinkedIn, put the post out there and go, right, I've ticked the box, it's done. What you then do is you wake up on Tuesday and you do the exact same thing. Got to get my post done, seven o'clock in the morning, watch the right today, oh, that'll do, tick the box, put it out there. On Wednesday, something happens. Like there's something happens. You've got to take the kids to school a bit earlier, um, like dogs pooed on the floor, whatever. Like there's something that's happened, right? That stopped you from getting your piece of content out there. And therefore you miss a Wednesday. You then wake up on a Thursday and you kick yourself and you go, right, I need to get my content piece out there. I'm going to do it a bit early and you get it done. On Friday, you think it's a Friday. Don't really feel like it. I'm going to miss it. And then on Saturday, no one's on LinkedIn on a Saturday. And then you wake up on a Sunday, you reflect and you go, God, I should have done that. And you then get back on the horse again. That is a typical content activity that happens so often. And it's why inconsistency is a thing with all of this stuff, right? What then happens is like you then send some messages, you drive people to your profile where it currently says, um, book a call in your about section, email me in your about section, or it says, drop me a message if you're interested. Unfortunately. By doing this, you're treating LinkedIn as a tick box exercise and you end up doing yourself a big disservice. And the thing with all of it is that you're missing out on opportunity from poor call to actions. So whether you're trying to sell straight away or whether you are hoping that someone reach out to you, what you don't have is control on your overall marketing process. And what I thought it would be useful to show, you tell me if this will be useful for you to see, is our process, like the end-to-end -end process of almost what you're in right now, would it be helpful to see kind of like the end-to-end -end of kind of like how we use LinkedIn day-to-day -to, -day to be able to get the results from it? If it is, just put a yes in the chat. There's a few of you that have already jumped the gun anyway. This stuff, right, is genuinely so simple. I don't show you it to overwhelm you. I show you it to show you what you need to build to be able to maximize the results. This is it. So you can see 
LinkedIn activity. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but LinkedIn activity on the left-hand side, that's your posting, you're engaging and you're prospecting. We use LinkedIn events and LinkedIn messaging to drive people to one of two places. You saw this in the message, the content guide, which drives people to the email list or to a YouTube video. In the YouTube video, I talk about a webinar. In the emails, I talk about a webinar. You've all told me today where you've come from. You've come from the LinkedIn event or you've come from an email. 50% of you that have said yes to the LinkedIn event or received the email will then register for the Zoom. 50% of that number will then show up. Out of the 50% that show up, 10% of you will be right for us and we'll work together. That are the numbers. So to give you like the real context behind this strategy, if I can get a thousand people to say yes to a LinkedIn event in a month, which is our target, it means that 500 people are then going to end up registering for Zoom. So that's 500 email addresses that we collect on average every single month. Out of that 500, 250 of you will then show up to the workshop. And that means 10% of you, so 25 of you, will end up joining us throughout a month. Now, it doesn't mean that we get that every time. However, we are yet to see these figures not miss. If I can get a thousand people to say yes to a LinkedIn event, it means we get 25 new customers every single month without fail. This now means that LinkedIn is a huge part to our overall process and my activity ends up in revenue. My question to you is, do you have this in place right now? And if you don't, the reality check that that's the reason why you're not getting consistent business from the platform. This is the thing that you need to build. And this is just one key example of this process in place, right? I sent an introduction message to collect, um, connect with a lady called Caroline. I then sent that message that you saw earlier. Go and watch the YouTube video if you find it interesting. That was done on February the 6th of last year. Now, about 33 days later, I say about 33 days later, I get that response from Caroline. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Social Selling Academy? You advertise on your profile. I'm trying to work out if it's right for me or not. So I messaged Caroline back saying, just saw your message. Like, i have been more than happy to talk you through it. I provide an initial strategy call. And would it be helpful if you were to go and receive the workshop video so you could watch it? So we jumped on a phone call about 10 minutes later. I sent her the workshop link. And you can see from 2.22 p.m. to 5.35 p.m., Loved the webinar, signed up, had a few issues with payment, and we were through. That is the example of the process here that you need to put in place. What I did was, from a message they, that got completely ignored, then look to push people into our process and let the process do the work. And so my question is to you right now, what journey do you currently take your prospects on? Do you have one? And if not, there's some serious things that you really need to look at, not to scare you or anything, but just to kind of give you a little bit of a shake as to why this doesn't work. The average user, like I've mentioned before, thinks that if you just prospect, engage and post, you'll get the results. And the problem with it all is, is that as you scale, your strategy is based on luck and hope and you end up wasting time. I've said this time and time again in all of my content, like social media for me is quite toxic. I don't enjoy it. I use it for revenue generation. That is it. I'm looking to build an audience that are relevant to what I do so I can help our business grow by giving, getting people the results that they need from our service. You will most likely be the same. And sustainability from LinkedIn activity comes from having a campaign-led approach. Like our research shows there are three main campaign types that work. A value-add campaign, which is that, that content guide that I give away. If you go and connect with me on LinkedIn, by the way, type in like Chris Taylor, Pipeline 44, go connect with me. Connect, don't follow, click the three dots and connect. And just drop me a message saying content guide. I'll send you the guide if you want it. It should be on my profile anyway. But by sending the content guide out, that acts as our value add type campaign. They work really well because we're building a list. The second type of campaign is an event campaign. The one that I'm going to show you again in a second. We're going to go into detail on it. The second one is an event-based campaign. And the third one, if you are a serious key person of influence, I mentioned Rio Ferdinand earlier, right? Like if Rio Ferdinand messaged me, I would message him back because I want to have a conversation with him. So you have to be the key person of influence to make a conversation campaign work to warrant the response. That comes over time with positioning. But what happens is by having these campaigns in place, you meant to you want to have all three of them, but actually having one to begin with and then adding the other two one in time is what we teach. 
you start treating LinkedIn as what it's meant to be used for, and that's as a traffic source. And what happens is you drive people to the front end of the process and you let the process do the work. I've given you the statistics of our campaign, a thousand LinkedIn yeses, 500 registrations, 200 show ups, 25 customers. If I don't hit any one of those numbers, what I then look at is what do I need to change, adapt to be able to get it back to where I need to get to. It means that I don't have to redo the process over and over again. I can see where the drop in the percentages are and I can diagnose the problem, correct it and get it back up. It saves time, it's effective and it means I've got control of everything. And the best way to explain this is just to show you. So Donna, I mentioned earlier, she's an in-house lawyer and leadership coaching consultant and she had elements of this process in place. She'd worked with lots of other marketing people before but hadn't seen the results and this today explained why the messaging wasn't right the activity was there but the process wasn't in place to be able to effectively nurture and straight away we noticed that there were certain things that she had to change and this is the thing that we do on that call we'll highlight your gaps donna was using linkedin regularly like many of you probably are but wasn't talking the right language she didn't have a conversion piece of content in place so therefore was leaving opportunity on the table she was focusing on selling in direct messages rather than driving traffic. Her content didn't show off how good she was, and she was putting in lots and lots of effort commenting on random people's content without having a clear way of identifying what was working and what was wasn't. Give me a yes in the chat if that's something that you can relate to right now, because I know lots and lots of people are doing this stuff, and this is their approach, right? What we did with Donna was map it out. You can take a photo of this, you can screenshot, do whatever you like. What we did was we went, right, Donna, what do you have in place? And this is what we worked out. She had a LinkedIn profile. She was building her network. She had a message and she was posting and she had an email magnet. That was all. Now, the problem was that she was missing the conversion part of the whole of this process. So what we did was we took the time to map out a plan for her and we put this in place. We optimized the stuff in connection. So the like the network building, the messaging, we got her active on YouTube, got her speaking publicly. We then developed her lead magnet to a point where people wanted to download it. That built her email list up. We gave her the email campaigns because you get the templates for those when you work with us. And then we drove and created her a webinar presentation, which we helped her build framed in the right way that led to the conversion that she wanted. You can see on the right hand side there, like when you work with us, you create your presentations, you send them to us and we will give you feedback on what you've done well and where you can improve. Right. So whether it's the actual way that you design the slides or the way that you deliver it, we needed to craft the message that helped us stand out. And we'll do the same for you. Right. We take the time to craft the message that's going to work. We then will map out and create the conversion piece of content. So we'll create if it's an event based campaign. We'll help you create that webinar. We'll show you how to set it all up. You then put in place the automated email campaign. So that doesn't, you don't have to do that every time. It's automated so you can do it. We created that high value gift, the thing that people like drool over. That content guide for us has been downloaded like nearly 15,000 times now. It's huge in terms of volume and people still want it today. And we said to her, like we'll say to anyone that works with us, like you need to remove everything else that you're doing right now and just for six weeks, focus in on this process, 100% commit to it and you'll see the results. And as a result of doing that, it wasn't even six weeks, it was three. We built that converting process for her that she repeats. She generated over six grand in sales within three hours of her workshop ending. She's now set her next date for January. She ran this, I think, at the end of November. And we now know what she needs to improve on to get this to work. Donna on her first one had 80 people register, 33 people attended, and then two people booked the application. And then from that, you can see that the two people that actually applied, not huge volumes, but both of them signed up. And then we had a bit of a party on that Friday night, a few drinks in the evening to be able to celebrate it. Now, that's the way that our community works. And to round off conversion for you, the same way that Donna did, the same way that you can now, the biggest things really are be intentional with your time, build a process that allows predictable conversions and really use social for traffic and let your process do the talking. If you can just do that, you will immediately start seeing the revenue. Now, this is the thing that like people are doing so often right now, like Lorna, I'm not going to read that for you, but the webinar strategy is working so well. And it's a thing that we specialize in. 
And again, time and time again, people are getting results from it. My question to you is, is this something that you could run? You don't have to run a webinar campaign. However, if you do, this is something that you can implement because the way that we do it is the thing that generates the consistent results. Now, the summary of today really is that generating leads isn't difficult, but to start doing it, you don't need to be posting hundreds of pieces of content online. You don't need to be worrying about algorithms. You don't need to spend time commenting on random strangers' content. What you need is to look at your product, package it in a way that actually solves the problem, in a way that people actually understand it, relate it and connect it to a process that effectively nurtures the person to the point where they want to buy and have a plan in place that you stick to, a place where you have control so you can generate traffic consistently. I'm going to speak to so many of you over the next few days, and I, I know how passionate you are. I get it. But what we need to do is make the changes to get your point, get you to a point where your business generates you the results that you deserve. And that's where I want to spend like 10 minutes talking to you about like the Social Selling Academy. Before I do, has today been helpful? And would you like to hear a little bit more about it before the Q&A section at the end? Just let me know. Because the thing that's really important with all of this is the simplification of it. I didn't want to leave you overwhelmed with today. What I wanted to give you were like the tasters and some things that you can change straight away to be able to make a difference. And that's where the Social Selling Academy comes in. Like I say, you can't buy this. You need to we'll speak together to be able to work out if it's the right fit or not. But this is where you get me. You get my business partner, Sam Rathling. If some of you may know Sam, um, you get my business partner, Nick, and all of our team helping you create and develop that strategy and moving you forward to create a process like we do. Like together, what we've taken the time to do is like build out the roadmaps for you to follow. And inside of the program, what we do is like handhold you through creating a product offering that stands out like we did with Sasha. We help you frame the message so your ideal clients. It's a bit of a weird talent that I've just got. I can get to know your business within five minutes and tell you what you need to be talking about. We'll do that on the call anyway, right? I'm going to give you the link to book that call in a second. But like I, we know how to frame your message to then pick a campaign type that's right for your digital marketing strategy. And then all you've got to do is follow the, the steps. We have certain systems in place which allow you just to follow the step-by-step -step approach to be able to do it. That's going to allow you to generate the appropriate amount of traffic. We will work out how much traffic you need. We will set the objectives alongside it so you're continuously working towards it. And then what happens is you just monitor the percentages as you go through to the point where people are ready to buy from you. It's really not that difficult. And what we really want to really focus on is growth here. Like this is revenue generation. This isn't about create, like generating millions of followers online. Like we have people with 200 connections generating revenue from this platform. It isn't that difficult. And when you commit to it, you will see growth. You've just got to remove everything else from what you're doing. 100% commit to this and it will work for you. This is stuff that we've been teaching like hundreds, if not nearly thousands of people now. We used to do it in person and we now do it online. We have COVID to thank for that. Um, but these, like the way that we work with people is very, very in-depth and it's very personal. You can see kind of like the messages that we get time and time again in Slack, which is the way that we do it from getting 92 registrations through to like the first ever pipeline sale coming through. Like I must say, Chris, you know what you're talking about. The feedback, all you have to do is look at my LinkedIn profile. I don't need to read this to you. It's there. Go and read it. We back up everything that we preach and we practice what we're doing every single day. You are part of the event process right now. And clients happen very, very quickly on this. Like you've just got to implement it. Within six weeks, you could be running your first webinar. Like within three weeks, Donna did it. You can do it even quicker. And to break down how this all works, um, you work with us for 12 months and you work through our program. Um, you, we work with you personally. So you're inside of a Slack community where we have conversations together. We will review your content. We review your profiles. We review your funnels, your landing pages, your emails. You send it through to us. We will give you the feedback and what changes you need to make. Every single Monday at 12 p.m., we do like a group coaching call. So it's like a mastermind open Q&A type session where we basically look at all the work that you're doing. I deliver some of the content inside of the academy training. I deliver that at the front end and then we have conversations around it. You get access to all of our templates, so our content templates, campaign templates, our emails, my presentation slide deck. You get to use it all. And we give you feedback on everything that you do, as well as 
we have a bit of fun every couple of weeks we run some bi-weekly challenges where like you can win one-to-one time with me um you can win one-to-one time with the team you can win all sorts of things and um, the thing that's not on here is when you if you're right and you decide to join us um me and you will spend 30 minutes together mapping out one-to-one like your strategy end to end what you're going to do message process product we'll map it all out and we design it i don't do that on every workshop but on this i'm going to offer it out it's not in this but you get 30 minutes with me and one to one and you get all of that for 150 quid a month like people charge thousands for this stuff we're not looking for that we're looking for 150 quid a month for 12 months to help you get the results that you need that is it really really simple the reality of all of this is you need to know we're help here to support you every step of the way. We're over 230 people strong in the academy now. We're a very, very close knit group. And every single day we're sharing education, tips, ideas. You'll see me documenting my journey in there. And so whether I'm looking at profiles, messages, campaigns, lead magnets, whatever, you send it in and we'll give you the feedback. Because quite frankly, I'm, and I know the team are as well, we're fed up of seeing people waste time on these platforms. You don't need to be spending hours a day. You don't even need to be spending half an hour a day, 10 to 15 minutes to get you going. And again, if you want to check out my profile, there's loads of recommendations on there. Like it's all over the internet. Just go and have a look, go and have a read. And to be able to go through and book one of those calls that I mentioned at the beginning, this is the link that you need. Um, I've said 15, I will open it to 20 just because of the amount of people that are on here today. I'll increase that to 20 um, and I'll do some over the weekend as well. You'll see some weekend times available. Um, but if you go to www.pipeline44.com slash apply, I'm just going to put this into the chat for everybody so you can see it. This is how you can book that call in with me, like I mentioned at the beginning. Dot com, if I can type. There you go. If you click that and go through to apply, it takes you to a Calendly link. There's some questions that I need to have the answers to to be able to help you on these calls. I'll be doing some today, some tomorrow. I can't do any Friday because I'm on a one-to-one day, um, but I'll be doing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then I'll stop them on Wednesday because that's when we close the entry to everything. Um, so on that call, like I said, we'll talk about your message. We'll talk about kind of your overall positioning, your process, and we'll look to identify any gaps that are currently there that we can help with. So go to that link, pipeline44.com slash apply. Once those call slots are gone, you'll see them on there. They're gone. I can't do anything. I haven't got any more time to be able to do it. I've literally made them as tight together as I could to be able to help you all. But that's how it works. Pipeline44.com slash apply. Um, I will go into the Q&A section. We've got nine questions, 10 questions to answer. Um, if you obviously have any more questions, please use the Q&A function. Yes, I will send a replay out to this. I normally upload it to my YouTube channel, so you'll see it there. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, please let me know. But that is everything. Um, thank you so much for those of you that have stayed till the end. I hope that's been helpful for you. I hope I've kind of made it clear in terms of what you have to do. Um, do me a favor. Let's have some fun. Like emoji, like to sum up how today's been for you and like to see how it works, see kind of how you're feeling after it. Do you feel inspired to go out there and do it? Do you feel like you can make the difference? Let's see how we're feeling on the back of today. Amazing. Lots of like, I've got a, a brain like overwhelmed face, hopefully not too much. Hopefully that's positive and not too negative. Good. Some people with a bit mind blown, which is good. amazing. So Richard's in a pondering mode. Okay. Got some smiley faces coming through. Andy thought it was cool. Amazing. Right. Because of time, let's get into this Q&A section. Uh, right. Answer that one. Done. Um, Lara, I sell vet, vet practices. Want to get more leads, more conversations around my post. That was answered to one of my other questions. Um, can you schedule posts in LinkedIn now? You can. Um, some of you will have the functionality. Some of you will not. Again, like I've not tested it fully to see whether it harms your overall reach. Give you the context. LinkedIn wants you on the platform. It wants you using the platform as much as possible. It also wants content on their platform. However, if you're using any external scheduling software, you're using API integration, which will restrict your reach. It tends to give you about a 10 to 20% reduction on your overall potential of the people that you can reach from your content. So when it comes to scheduling, I've always been against it. I, I create all of my content in notes, I have my photos saved or my videos saved. I copy, paste, and put it in. 
That's the way that I do it. I've not tested the LinkedIn scheduler yet. I will test it. I've had feedback that some people are getting glitches from it where it's not actually posting. It's being beta tested. It will come and actually be functional at some point properly. Very similar to how Facebook and Instagram's creator studio had lots of bugs at the beginning. Um, what's my view on scheduled content, Emma? I hopefully that's answered that for you as well. Um, usually for how many months LinkedIn ads should be run if we are introducing it years into after years in our campaigns. Like LinkedIn ads is something which I don't have too much experience with. That is this year's thing. We're going to look at it and look to see how they work. However, if you have a profitable ad campaign, the biggest advice that I can give you if it's working is to never turn it off. Purely because if you turn it off, it automatically de-ranks in their ad platform. Now, I don't want to get too technical because it can get overwhelming. However, the biggest thing is, the thing that I learned with Instagram and Facebook advertising is if you get an active campaign that converts, just look to change the original campaign. Or if you want to create a new ad set, duplicate what you've done rather than turning that one off. Duplicate, create a new ad set, change the targeting and go. Ads are really, really clever in the way that you can get them to work, but there are some fundamentals that you need to know before you go spending money. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, John, great webinar. Thanks, Chris. Could you explain the balance of value in giving away valuable content, expertise such as in this free webinar with keeping it to yourself to sell your paying clients? Yes. So the reality of all of this is I've given you enough to realize that I know what I'm talking about. Hands up. You know this, right? I've given you enough information, hopefully, where you can see that I'm credible in what I'm delivering. If you look at my profile, you'll see that it backs it up. In terms of like technical how-to content, if I try and squeeze too much how-to content into this, I'm going to overwhelm you because like our academy is about 50 hours worth of content. The Q&As are an hour. The one-to-one -one call at the front end is half an hour. That's the time over 12 months that we need. Normally, it's about 90 days at the front end to be able to get you through the content. And then it's about just delivering and implementing and tinkering and changing. Like if I tried to deliver that in an hour, it just wouldn't work. So I'm doing you an injustice by trying to. That's kind of like the balance that you need. You need to be delivering content, which helps people realize that they're not doing things right. That's what this is. I need to really shine a light on the things that you're making the mistakes on. I then need to give you insights in how to share it so you can go away and do something that you need to and you can go and test. But then what I need you to realize is the quicker way is to work with us. That's the whole process and how it works. So I'm not giving away everything. I can't. I can't do it in an hour. It's not possible. But I'm honest when I communicate that. Like I say that on every workshop that I deliver. So as long as you're upfront about it, that's the way that I find my balance. I hope that helps. Um, why do you say a call to action isn't a good idea? Call to action is a very good idea, but it's the right call to actions. If you're looking to drive someone to a sale off the back of a LinkedIn post, because of the mindset that we are, unless the person is 100% already aware and committed to buying your service, they just won't do it because they need more convincing. They need more information. They need more technical stuff to be able to work out if you're the right supplier or the right provider for them. So call to actions to say or no, call to actions to engage, yes, that's fine. Does it mean every business has to do an event to get leads? No, Vinod, there are other campaigns that you can run. The events one is just the one that I booked in for it. Um, if you can't get the link to book a call, let me just double check. It's pipeline44.com slash apply. I mean, I'm going to try it and just see if it works. It works for me. So it might be just give it a refresh. There's lots of people going to it, Lara. So it might just be that there's a bit, a bit of a glitch in terms of time. Give it like five to 10 minutes, try it again. It should work. If not, drop me a message on LinkedIn. If it doesn't work, then and we can go through it. Okay. That is every question answered. If there's any more, I'll stay in for another minute or so. But for me, for those of you that have booked your call, I've seen the notifications come through. Thank you. Look forward to speaking to you. Con, audio events. That was one thing. Um, not tried them. I was a big user of Clubhouse like back in lockdown periods. And I loved it. It was really, really good because it was the opportunity to network. Um, audio is something that I'm going to test over the next couple of months. So check in with me in a couple of months and I'll be able to give you the feedback. I'm not someone to give you like opinions on stuff that I've not tested. Um, I've not used it since it's been out, so I can't have a positive outlook on it, but it doesn't mean to, doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity there. Um, have booked 18th of January, 8.30, haven't received confirmation yet. Andy, no problem. Um, I will double check and I'll write down your name and I'll just, it also, oh, you've got it now. Cool, fine, perfect. 
Right. Thank you very much, everybody. Good to see you all this morning, now this afternoon. Um, I have finished on time, which is great. Um, have a great rest of your week. For those of you that booked your calls, I'll speak to you then. Anyone's got any questions, drop me a message on LinkedIn. Over and out. See you later. Bye-bye.